How's it going out there, YouTube? My name is Jesse, and I am back for another comic book video. Even in the DC universe, there are a lot of teams out there, whether they're teams up or convenience, teams up of just being in the right place at the right time, or team up because Bored Heroes has nothing better to do. <laughs> There are a lot of team-ups and a lot of organizations that are together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight what I consider to be the 10 best teams in the DC Universe. So, let's go ahead and kick this off with number 10 and number 9. Both of these teams require you to be a certain type. You'll see what I mean. Coming in at number 10 is Metal Men. They first appeared in Showcase number 37 in 1962. Now, to be part of the Metal Men, you need to be, well, essentially a sentient robot. They were created by Dr. Magnus. The original members of the Metal Men were gold, iron, lead, mercury, tin, which were all males, and platinum, who was a female. Now, they could all merge together and become the robot Alloy, which is stronger than any one of them individually. There's also later to be a member of the Metal Men known as Copper. Now, they can change their forms, they're super stretchy, and their weaknesses depend on what the medical, metal composition of them is weak to. Like if one was a weak to acidic chemicals or corrosive air materials, that would be one of their greatest weaknesses. They've also had other members of the crew have assisted them, um, such as zinc, silver, and cobalt. Coming at number nine, Birds of Prey. They first appeared in the Black Canary Oracle, Birds of Prey number 1, in 1996. It is a team of superheroines, all women. The leader of the group is Oracle. Some of the members consist of Black Canary, Huntress, Lady Blackhawk, and Dove. Now, this is a female Dove, which replaced the original, and Hawk is part of it, even though he is male. But Hawk and Dove's power works in conjunction with each other, so he only tags along so that Dove can have her power. For number eight, um, I, I'm not even sure if this team is really even a team at times. In, in my opinion, they're the Great Lake Avenger versions of the DC Universe, and you'll see what I mean here. Coming at number 8 is the Doom Patrol. They first appeared in My Greatest Adventure, number 80, in 1963. Now, I'm convinced that Doom Control is a joke, and it's a pretty good one, too. With members such as Elastigirl, Negative Man, and Robot Man, and, well, they've had Beast Boy, led by the Chief. It, it, it just seems that they, they can't help but be a joke when they have members such as Danny the Street, who became Danny the Alley, who became Danny the Brick, and Danny the World, a living street. Um, with And villains such as Animal, Vegetable, Mineral Man, and The Brain. And if it is a joke, it's a pretty good one. Now, number seven and number six are... Teams that are as much as being in outer space as it is being on the Earth. But I'd say more of their adventures have to do with being off Earth, even though that they're they're not exclusively they're not exclusive to Earth. Coming in at number seven, I have the Legion of Superheroes, which first appeared in Adventures Comic number two forty seven in nineteen fifty eight. The three original members of the group was Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, and Saturn Girl. They have come back in the past many times to recruit heroes such as Superboy, Superman, and Supergirl. Um, some of their notable members 
as Brainiac 5 and Chameleon Lad, they now have a huge organization which helps them defend the universe and the Earth in particular. And, to note, all Legionnaires do get a Legionnaire's flight ring, so they're all capable of flying, even if it's not part of their power set. Coming in at number six... The Green Lantern Corps. Now, it is more of a core than it is a team, but still, it has the same uh, set with it. With members such as John Stewart, Kilowog, Hal Jordan, and Nort, the Green Lantern dog, and former members such as Sinister, Sinistro and Carl, Kyle Rayner, and Guy Gardner, who has and hasn't been Green Lantern. He kind of keeps going back and forth. Um, the Green Lantern Corps is tasked with defending the entire universe, but there does seem to be an inordinate number of Green Lanterns on the planet Earth. So, you know, outer space and on Earth, protecting the universe, what they do. Now, coming in at number five, it is one of the greatest heroes in the DC universes, showing that he can take a group of relatively unknown heroes and make himself relevant. And you'll see what I'm talking about coming in at number five. Coming in at number five, Batman and the Outsiders. First appearing in The Brave and the Bold, number 200, Batman and the Outsiders, Batman quit the Justice League when they wouldn't help him rescue a friend that had been brought down in an enemy-infested territory because the government told them not to interfere with other countries. Batman said, well, I'm not going to do this with you. He ended up getting a number of heroes with him together, Katana, Geoforce, Halo, Black Nightning, and Metamorpho, and formed the Outsiders. He trained them himself and was part of the organization for the longest time. Um, and the Outsiders are still an organization today. Now, number four and number three don't actually take place on Earth-1. These are some of the greatest teams from Earth 2. Coming in at number 4, the All-Star Squadron. The All-Star Squadron first appeared in Justice League of America 193 in 1981. They are a team that was founded in the 80s based on the 40s. It was a number of superheroes that were around at the time that were all formed together to be a, a group in the 1940s. Um, this took place on Earth 2 with members such as Guardian, Uncle Sam, Sandman, Wildcat, even members such as Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Batman, Robin, Batman and Robin, and Superman were all part of the All Star Squadron at one time. Coming in at number three is the Justice Society of America, which first premiered in All-Star Comics number 3 in 1940. Now, the Justice Society is the very first team founded by DC. Team as in an organization, not team up like Batman and Robin. The Justice Society would later become the All-Star Squadron, but the Justice Society consisted of all the heroes that actually were around that time. The original Green Lantern, the original Flash, um, Sandman, Our Man, Batman, and Superman, and Wonder Woman, all from Earth 2, which took place you know, before Earth 1. So the original 40s Batman and 30s Superman were all part of the Justice Society of America. Now, since I haven't mentioned them so far, if you are a DC fan, you probably know who's coming in at number two and who's coming in at number one. And if you're not a DC fan, well, here's number two and number one. Coming in at number two, the Teen Titans. And no, not Teen Titans Go. Can't stand that show. 
and not the original Teen Titans cartoon series, which was actually very good. I'm talking about the Teen Titans that appeared in The Brave and the Bold, number 54, in 1964. The very first three members of the Teen Titans were Robin, Aqualad, and Kid Flash. I think about that for a second. Um, they answered the stress call, and they all worked together to stop a guy who can control storms. They decided to stay the team and their predecessors, which would have been Super or Batman, Aquaman, and the original Flash, said that it was great to be a team. And I don't want to say this is a team consisting of sidekicks, but there is an enormous number of sidekicks on there. And everyone who is considered to be a teenage superhero is either a part of or has been a part of the Teen Titans at one point in time. Coming in at number one, you probably guessed it by now, and if you haven't, you're either not a DC fan or you just haven't been paying attention to this entire list. Coming in at number one is the Justice League, first appearing in Brave and the Bold, number 28, in 1960. And yes, I'm including both the Justice League America and Europe. The original lineup for the Justice League is very similar to the Justice League cartoon. The original lineup is Aquaman, Batman, Flash, who is Barry Allen, Green Lantern, who is Hal Jordan, Martian Manhunter, who you know is John Jones, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Almost every hero has been a part of the Justice League at one point in time, even some of the counterparts from Earth 2. They've even had villains among the ranks of the Justice League. They are considered one of the greatest, if not the greatest team in all of comic books. That's not just DC. I'm including all comic books. And... A little bit of side trivia, if it wasn't for the Justice League, we would not have the Avengers when they came out if we ever would have had the Avengers at all. The Justice League is responsible for their creation. I hope you enjoyed this video of my list of the top 10 DC teams. If you did like this video, go ahead and give that like button a click. If you have any questions or comments about this list, you can go ahead and leave them in the comment section or you can leave them on my Facebook page and I'll put the information in the credits. You can also follow my Tumblr page which I post every Sunday and I'll put the information for that in the credits again. And if you like the video here and you want to see more of the stuff that I'm going to be doing every week or see some of the old videos, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So, until next time, I'll see you.